morning everyone. Well I'm just here preparing my low calorie breakfast and I look out there and I see Bev sorting out her garden just going around checking on things here. So what we'll do I'll eat my egg and then we'll go out there and we'll see what she's up to. We live on the Carlton Reserve here in Tauranga. And this uh, Saturday today being Friday there's a tournament going to happen here you can see how they've uh, mowed out the bases for the softball pitches so they've got four in this normally one adult triangle over the back there there's uh, they've set out three or four on that one and in this field over the back here there's uh, it's all mapped out for uh, tournaments there too so I'm expecting there would be upwards of six or seven hundred people here playing softball over the next uh, Friday today they'll start coming and doing practices and then move on to the tournament and proper tomorrow but our little house is here on the corner and uh, I'll get Bev to show you around her garden Oh, cup of tea time. Oh, you got me one here? Beauty. Yeah. Hey, will you show us around the garden? Yeah, sure. Around here, I want to know about these uh, aquilegias. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And so I found them in the book for you. Everybody knows them as granny bonnets. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the most usual sort of granny bonnets that I always thought of were, were purple ones. You know, they have um, purple skirts and, and pink um petals mm -hmm. yeah um, but the ones i particularly like growing especially because of of the purple vine is these yellow ones that so, seem to dash yeah, off them. i know some aquilegias are smaller and more confined like a granny's bonnet but these ones seem to dash off like shooting stars and i like the way that they're yellow because they contrast with the purple <coughs> of the vine so you notice this Aquilegia here is a different colour. Yes. Yeah. Every year the aquilegias reproduce themselves and mix and match like pansies do, and you get different colours. So, um, so what this fence is about is it's supporting the mandevilla plant, and I I really gave no hope for it coming through the winter and surviving into the spring. But it's gotten rid of its black spot. Find a bit of black spot somewhere. There's a bit. See, there's a bit of black spot. Yeah. But it all seems to have dissipated in that pressure. It, has. it leaves. seems to have, um, the vigour of the plant has managed to go on. And now I'm very excited because we've got this the beginning of flower heads. I'm, gonna, um, I'm just going to uncover. So you can see that these are, are on their way, you see, because it's very cold in Tauranga in the wind and this is a tropical plant, so, um, and it's, it loves being by the hot fence, but it can't stand the Tauranga wind, so it's not quite ready to be revealed yet. Um, Chloe owns this one, this red one, it's, it is delicious, it has a big red trumpet. Chloe's one is over there, and Samantha and um, Sophie's ones are here. I think uh, Samantha's one's down low, yeah. and um, no, Samantha's one's the white climber, and Sophie's one's the pink one. So they're, they're spectacular flowers. They're real showstoppers once they come. Planting out. over the playhouse there has uh, had a bit of a knock around in those storms we've had. I like it because when we get some heavy rain, it bosses around all the, the um, blossoms that have gone brown and they fall off and you're left with nice um, clean green um, foliage and then you get new a new flush of, um, of they're a spring blush like a, like a blossom on a, on a plum tree. And then I just leave some of them because this is star jasmine and it has a lovely perfume. Yeah. So you can smell it there. And that how far away from they from blooming? About a week. Yeah. See yeah. the young uh, flowers are nearly there now, aren't they? Yeah. So I was at a, at a nursery um, having a cup of tea with a friend, Diana.
and um, she was buying a rose and I thought oh I said you're so lucky you can have a rose I've got nowhere to plant it she said oh it's not about having a place to plant it everyone can buy a pot and put a rose in a pot and I thought you're so right Di so I took one home where'd you put it over here Bred by Bob Matthews from New Zealand. A beautiful lilac pink flower with divine fragrance. Named for our grandma, Lewana. So what, what I did was um, I just moved a pot, moved a seat, and then put the new pot here and put the rose in. And because it's growing on a lean, it wasn't a very expensive rose, but it was just such lovely colours. And I'm kind of leaning it up towards the hedge, but apparently it only grows to three, uh, one metre. So I'm only expecting it ever to be this big. So there'll be loads of room for it. Occasionally I've seen the cosmos flower in people's like cottage gardens, and they look so wild and lovely and uh, often they're quite high they can be as high as your midriff but the ones that are, you seem to be able to buy in the nurseries these days are little dwarf ones and this is what i've got here and then i looked about on the internet and i found a way of supporting them in the wind and if you look at there you shouldn't be able to see the netting that i've laid down grow taller they'll be struck over by the wind and they'll lay down flat on an angle you know like the plant will collapse like that and then after after the wind is gone the, the, the plant is bent and then it regains its shape like an S shape and it looks very untidy but um, with the support of the netting, everything grows nice and stiff and stays exactly so and then it gets all feathery and flowers and, and they don't fall over. Of buying cosmos plants, you're better to plant them by seeds, but even then it's always a mystery what colour they're going to turn out like. Like I can see there that a, a failure of these plants turned out two white flowers and this time, these might all be white flowers or they might be these lovely um, pink ones. So we just have to wait and see. Going around all the English country gardens, I, I learned that the English like their gardens with um, pastel colours like greys and, and dusky pinks. Like they build a tapestry with mauves and, and pinks and, and blues. And that, that's what I've always copied. And I'm not quite sure what this guy is, but it might be a Nemesha. And it's certainly it's a Nemesha I've put in under the rose as well. So this is just the chorus girl for the display. And these ones along the front here? Um, everyone knows them as um, lamb's ears, don't they? Okay. And I see another one right in the centre there. This one? Up higher. In, in oh front. yeah. Over no, here. no, not that far. Halfway. Oh, this one here? Yeah. Oh, this one here, this belongs to this Dutchman who lives along the, the track. Um, this one grows all the time in his garden. It's actually a hibiscus. These um, grow up in pathways and, and just, they grow anywhere. And... Um, if you think of the hibiscus, the woody um, shrub that, that we are more familiar with, it's got exactly the same flower and it really is a hibiscus. So this one here is uh, one I see you plucking the dead heads off, but does it keep on coming back? Uh, yeah, that's what daisies do. It had a big flush of blue daisies and in a previous life it was just a tiny little flower that I thought I'd lost. And this year it came back in full force and I thought, oh, well, I'll, I'll go about and I'll pick all your dead heads off and give it another chance. Well, speaking of 
speaking of daisies, I've always had those white ones at the back and um, I'm trading daisies with, with another lady that lives in the neighbourhood. And my favourite amongst here is one that Chloe and I took a cutting of. I just love the way its petals are pinched in like that. And you see it lives right next door to ones that is the same flower but it hasn't got that same hybridization. It's not the same. <laughs> At the moment on this fence, I'm um, tying all the Cecil Brunner stems across so that we can grow these sweetheart rose. It'll come into bloom soon enough. If you have a look here, you can see that these, these will be out in a week. Dear little roses, and they flower for the next six months. Mm -hmm. Back to daisies. Daisies take up quite a lot of room and they drink a lot of water and you have to get violent with them and throw them out. But I've decided to do a few more daisies and I actually purchased a daisy here. And I did have it made by the compost bin that I will actually plant some bigger things like um, daisies and border plants that take up a lot of room. So this, this is a kind of a Shasta daisy, and this is the ticket off it, where they call it um, chrysanthemum something or rather. Uh, Leucanthium banana cream, banana cream. So it's a creamy coloured Shasta daisy. I and over the back is a cutting that was given to me by a lady, and she calls that one a Shasta daisy too poppies in the garden. I rush out and get them before the rain and then look at them in a vase and then when I come out again there's some new ones so that's good. I like it. This here was a cutting that was given to me yesterday and you see it hasn't, it really hasn't even bothered to shrivel up or or even look a bit sad has it so it's on its way. That came from over the by the beach there did it? Yeah it did. Now, so what we're waiting for here is um, this, this, um, this is fireball, this is the rose that makes a splendid display for about three months and it's really, it's unlike my flowers other than the poppy, it's sort of a very hot colour. But uh, when it's out in bloom, I'm able to pick big bunches for people going past and send them off with big bunches of fireball roses. And in amongst them, I put this blue salvia. See the blue? This is the blue salvia that I stick in the bunch of fireball roses to give people walking past. But just one stem, see, you just take one stem like that and you end up with a whole head of fireball roses to give away and people go oh really can i really have this you know and you know damn well that there's going to be another bunch growing here you know and another bunch growing there it is a great rose mm -hmm. although it's really too bright for my likings but i tuck it down here by the clothesline and that way i can live with it but what i do love with it is johnson's blue I really love Johnson's Blue. This is Johnson's Blue. Where did you first come across that? In England. It used to grow underneath um, the oak trees and in the backs of the gardens, you know. It was obviously the gardeners love to have, um, lots of gardeners love having these shady areas with Johnson Blue just waving around everywhere. That fox family at that big house we lived in for a while, it had uh, all those in under the big trees, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, hmm. yeah. What was that house called? Uh, Pentland House. Pentland. Pentland House, yeah. yeah. And the other thing I like about it is that it doesn't restrain itself to um, being a ground cover. It starts to take over things that it's living next to. So it will start to grow up this trellis. It'll this grow stuff up. Is just so sticky like it's covered with um, candy floss and um, sometimes you walk past the bushes and you come away with with their flowers you know stuck to your um, clothes
clothes like this, you know. They stick on you. And I suppose some people might not like that, but, but just that intense blue colour is just so pretty. What I'm looking forward to is seeing this grow. I bought this in the nursery, I had no idea, I'd never even read the ticket. I just thought, oh, I'll, I'll have that and see what happens. And it's called Mock Orange. In her very first um, months of being planted, this is Mock Orange. And apparently these are picked flowers. You can pick these flowers and they last a long time in a vase. And they smell really, really interesting. Like a mixture of lemon and orange and kind of perfumey, you know, just a different scent. Lovely. I'm expecting mock orange to be this big and I'm expecting it to be able to be smelt all the way across the park. But where am I going to wash me, uh, dry me clothes? Well, I'll just use the uh, hedge clippers or something and cut you a path. Well, It'll be fine. That'd be right, will it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got another part of the garden which you could say is neglected, but it's my little... Um, area for thinking, so I'll show you. Well, this is the not neglected area of the garden. That's right. When we went to the west coast, we stayed for three months, and I knew that we were going to stay a long time, so I just planted lupins, and then now I've used the lupins to, to revitalize, revitalize the soil. They don't fall over that there. So now now what it is, it's a place for me to put cuttings because people come past and say, oh, I'd love to grow that rose. And I say, well, I promise you I'll put a plant in. And they always grow, so there they are now. And the, no, but the customers haven't come and got them. So that just stays there until someone wants them. I said to her yesterday, I want to put some tomato plants in. She just looked at me with disdain and said, you can't have them. But this is normally where we grow tomatoes, right by the kitchen. We've got parsley in abundance, some silver beet there. Alvin says he wants to plant tomatoes, but he might plant them, but he'll never pull a weed and he'll never come back and eat them. So I just think we just leave it at the, at the supermarket store. I did poke some silver beet down in here, you see. And I was hoping to get our run of beans going again this year, but look what's happened. <laughs> but this is not nothing because <laughs> this is a like a terrarium for, um, for monarch caterpillars. Yes. If you have a look at those leaves, you will see they're being gobbled up by monarchs. And I've seen a new monarch fly out of here this morning. One morning we went to bed and there were um, lovely scarlet runner beans growing on this fence. And I was joking with Alvin that if I could open the window a bit further, I wouldn't have to go outside to pick the scarlet runners. And when I woke up in the morning, one tendril of a scarlet runner had come all the way inside and was reaching out across the um, dining room table. And I thought that was rather nice. So I had the idea of growing an apple tree because the neighbours have had an apple tree for 25 years and no one's ever looked after it but it's always produced some apples and I thought well I'll stick an apple tree in too and then I wanted to rationalise growing a rose as well and I thought well maybe the rose could stop the school kids from pinch pinching the apples so I bought Sally Holmes because I used to have her down on the west coast and I never actually saw her grow. And I went to Palmer's garden and I bought an apple tree and I brought it home and I had nowhere to put it and Alvin had to build this for it to live in. And I'd also brought a rose. To rationalize having a rose was that the rose would be here to stop the school kids stealing the apples. So um, when I first put the rose thorns here that was to keep the kids from pinching the apples and they did pinch a couple and put on them but now the rose is called Sally Holmes and it's taken over you know which is what I wanted and the easiest thing about Sally Holmes is the way the buds start 
the buds start this lovely apricoty colour and then they go intensely yellow in the centre which is so beautiful and they look wonderful stuck in a vase they really do and they last and they last through a storm and of course they do have like um, a pink virus you know but that never worries me or other rose growers I don't think and look you know we were talking about hibiscus here's a hibiscus tree the same as that white flower in the garden with the dark eye you know that's the same variety but of course this is the woody hibiscus that we're all so familiar with that's lucky to remain there it's right up against my implement shed isn't it you've threatened its life many times but it's such a delightful thing it asks for nothing and produces flowers many many months of the year so how long is it before you train it along here well when i look up all the books about it it says that it sort of grows in a column shape you know so it might grow like 15 feet and um, say six feet wide but it never mentions it running along a fence so we've yet, yet to see it but it's done this in has taken two years i think to grow to here and um, i think if i'm lucky the new growth this year will head that way and you've already started training them up here so overall you're happy with things i love sally holmes i really i think she's just a beautiful girl you know you can put her in a vase and she becomes the background for any other bouquet that goes in the vase because it's got such a variety it's got it's got the little pink buds the big white flower and then these apricotty shades in between and it's tough it's so tough Lovely. all right well thanks for showing us around your garden today that's all right Alvin. yeah